we um, got some of this liquid aspirin. And the idea here is that, you know, feeding normal aspirin to um, pigs is is a pretty regular practice, but it can have some detrimental effects on the GI tract. It can cause ulcers if fed in high amounts, and it also can um, have some other negative effects. But the idea with this enhanced liquid aspirin is that those um, negative effects are um, supposed to be sort of taken care of by um, the compound that's bound to the aspirin. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today I'm joined by Dr. Sarah Pierce, a research animal physiologist at the USDA Agricultural Research Service. So Sarah, before we begin, could you tell the audience a little bit about your background? Yeah, so I will start with where I work currently, which is the National Laboratory for Agriculture and the Environment. We are located in Ames, Iowa, and we are actually right on Iowa State's campus, which is really, really great for us. And um, my background, so I actually got my graduate degrees here at Iowa State. I did a master's uh, in heat stress, actually, and PhD in heat stress uh, with doctors Lance Baumgard and Nick Gabler. And then I actually kind of took a little detour before coming back and I worked in the biomedical field for a little bit. And then I came back to work with uh, pigs again at the USDA. Gotcha. So I understand at the USDA, your team has done some work with gut health and with some non-antibiotic alternatives. So to start us off, what all research has your team done on this topic? Uh, So I'm on a team of three different researchers. We have an animal nutritionist, myself, a physiologist, and then we also have a microbiologist. And our current research project that's a five-year long project plan is focusing on physiological, microbiological, and nutritional mechanisms to maintain animal productivity in the absence of antibiotics. And that's a really broad topic, but we have, uh, for the most part, been focusing quite a bit on... uh, plant-derived phenolics and pigments. And then um, my other colleague is very interested in in this field looking at um, gene transfer for antibiotic resistance. And so we have done um, a few studies that we've already completed and, and been able to publish. And then we have, uh, I think, three years left of this project plan. So we have some uh, research that we still have planned uh, to do later this year and into next year. Uh, so the first one I'll chat about is Uh, We just got a a paper published in the Journal of Functional Foods looking at the effects of Aronia melanocarpa juice powder on hindgut function and performance in post-wean pigs. So Aronia melanocarpa are uh, a type of berry that are actually native to Iowa. Um, They have a really, really high antioxidant and anti-inflammatory status, higher than even blueberries or cranberries. So we were able to actually partner with um, some a local company who harvests these locally in Iowa, and we were able to actually get this powder to feed to pigs. And really what we were looking at in this pilot study is just um, some kind of basic performance factors and looking at some hind gut function uh, and gut microbiota as well. And this first study, um, we really didn't find a lot of gross changes in performance, but we did find some uh, g- gene changes in intestinal function that uh, and inflammatory status that would um, hopefully lead us to some follow-up studies to explore that further. And then um, we also, kind of on a s- similar vein, although it's not related to phenolics, we worked with Iowa State and we just had another paper published looking at dietary protein level and its effects on intestinal function and inflammation, so high and low crude protein And um, we just had that published in the Journal of Animal Science. And at least uh, in this study, there were really not uh, many or any negative changes associated with feeding high and low crude protein on things like intestinal function and um, uh, colonic metabolites. So VFAs and amines and um, kind of related compounds. So those are just the first two studies that we have published in this uh, project plan, but we also later this year have a study that we are kind of working right now on writing up all the iCook forms for that we want to look at a bunch of different uh, phenolics, um, phytogens, so some commercial, some not, and we would like to be able to do a much bigger study to kind of chase down this question of um, can some of these plant-derived compounds be used in the absence of antibiotics to 
um, kind of maintain gut health and maintain performance uh, because the USDA has had a uh, quite a big push to, um, I guess, in this area to move away from the use of antibiotics wherever possible. Gotcha. So we chatted about this a little bit ahead of time before we actually started recording. But during that time, you mentioned that there was an aspirin product that you guys were doing some research on. So what all was involved with that? Yeah, so um, we had um, someone reach out to us that was sort of interested in testing. It's it enhanced liquid aspirin is what it's called in an animal model. And this is um, a product that had actually been previously used in human studies. I think there was some research during COVID on this as well, but they were kind of curious to see if it would be a good alternative in an animal model. So we um, got some of this liquid aspirin. And the idea here is that, you know, feeding normal aspirin to um, pigs is, is a pretty regular practice, but it can have some detrimental effects on the GI tract. It can cause ulcers if fed in high amounts, and it also can um, have some other negative effects. But the idea with this enhanced liquid aspirin is that those um, negative effects are um, supposed to be sort of taken care of by um, the compound that's bound to the aspirin, and it's actually thought to enhance intestinal barrier function. So we did a very, very small um, pilot study where we gavaged this liquid aspirin for five days um, in uh just post wean pigs. And these pigs were not um, challenged with any sort of bacteria or virus. They were just um, our commercial pigs. But we just looked at some very basic things like um, growth performance. And we also looked at it, some intestinal function markers, um, morphology of the GI tract. And this preliminary data shows that it uh, may increase body weight. But again, we only did it for a few days. And so we would like to follow up on that. And it also looks like it may um, increase villus length in, in the intestine, so may increase surface area. And there's some indication that it may have an effect on appetite. So we would like to you know, continue to follow up with that and explore that further. But that was um, some interesting preliminary data. And you did say that this work is a little preliminary, so maybe this is a little bit too early to ask. But normally with aspirin, you use that for lameness or stiffness that you may see as they're getting a little bit closer to market size. Um, do you think that this product could be used in a completely different approach earlier on to promote gut health and growth promotion? Or will it still be used for lameness in the later stages, but with that extra added benefit? Yeah, I think this would be, I don't know if it would necessarily be a replacement for using normal aspirin for um, what you're talking about, but uh, in the realm of non-antibiotic alternatives, if we're thinking about how to get pigs that are just post-weaning sort of off on the right foot and um, getting them to grow better, this is sort of the idea is to give it to them pretty early on and sort of track the growth uh, over a longer period of time to see if that um, weight gain actually continues. And so it's more of a non-antibiotic alternative, even though it is an aspirin. So I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but um, yeah, it would probably be fed earlier on. And there's some potential to maybe look into putting it in water lines, but you know, we started very, very small right now. So not just with the aspirin, but with everything that you guys are doing with also the phenolics and the pigments. What, are, what do you believe are the next steps for your line of research? Are you looking to collaborate with other universities or commercial sized farms? Or what do you believe needs to be the next step in order to further develop these products and understand them further? Yeah, so we currently work quite a bit with Iowa State University. And we also work uh, right down the street from us as the National Animal Disease Center in Ames. And so we've worked with them, but we are um, always open to collaborating with other universities, industry partners, other government partners, um, just because we have, a, we're a very small unit. We're a three scientist unit. And so we can kind of glean a lot of outside expertise, you know, that we don't have, like, for example, immunology is one I can think of uh, that we usually look for outside partners on, but there's other, there's other uh, potential areas as well. Like you, we know feeding pigs is a challenge. At Alltech, our proven specialty ingredients work to solve your toughest challenges. Whether it's combating mycotoxins, increasing feed efficiency, or just getting a few extra pigs per litter, Alltech's full line of trace minerals, enzymes, prebiotics, and other specialty ingredients are backed by science and real customer success. 
Start seeing maximized health, sustainability, and profitability in your pigs, and more free time for you by visiting alltech.com slash pig today. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Sarah, for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yep, and everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.